Hi everyone! Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about my identity. Am I Japanese or am I Korean? The reason I decided to talk about this was because I offered a webinar about doing business with Korea yesterday and we found an interesting comment. It was mentioned that, oh, interesting Japanese people is gonna talk about Korean culture. To me, I didn't take it personal because that happens to me a lot in my life because my name is fully Japanese. My father is half Japanese, half Korean. So my father's size grandpa is a Japanese person and my mom is 100% full Korean born in Korea. My, my dad was born in Korea too. And my mom moved to Hiroshima during the colonial period and my dad moved to Hiroshima after the war, after the bomb was dropped. And so I am three-fourths Korean and one-fourth Japanese according to this family tree. And so, yes, uh, the reason I have Japanese name is because when I was born back in 1975, a child could get only father's size nationality. And my dad, of course, received only father's size nationality, which is uh, Japanese. So I received Japanese. But I believe, I'm not sure the right year, but I think 1980s, 86 or something. Uh, Japan changed the law and a child can receive both mother's and father's uh, citizenship. So just like my kids, uh, the first one was born in the States, so he received Japanese nationality from me and Korean nationality from his dad and he was born in the States so he had American nationality and my second son was born in Osaka so he received Japanese nationality from me and Korean nationality from my husband. So you can get double nationalities when you're born, but when I was born, I only received father's side. So that's why I only have Japanese name and Japanese nationality. But growing up in our house, uh, my mom and dad didn't speak Korean in the house. Although some words and phrases they used, but they were very little when they came to Japan. My mom was three and my dad was 10 and back then, it wasn't easy for Korean people to live proudly in Japanese society because of a lot of discrimination happened. So they used Japanese more and they became monolingual Japanese speakers. So when I grew up, my mom and dad were always speaking Japanese uh, Hiroshima dialect. So I grew up knowing basic words phrases and once I tried to learn hunger so I knew how it worked basically but it was an everyday thing but what was the everyday thing was food culture and how we live um, we had kimchi every day and we had a big Tupperware of kimchi in our refrigerator and my mom made her own kimchi and the way she cooked Japanese miso soup was not like Japanese way but Korean way kind of cook it, boil it for a long time which Japanese people think it's killing the nice aroma of the broth and miso but in Korean culture it's important to uh, cook it a long time and my brother didn't like my mom's miso soup and also every time something special happened you know my mom cooked bibimbap you know it was uh, kind of like a in order to celebrate because in order to make bibimbap you have to make a lot of different kinds of vegetable dish number so it's a lot of work so she made you know bibimbap whenever something special happened and wanted to celebrate and new year's day we ate japanese style mochi soup which is called zoni but also we made Korean style rice cake soup which is called tteokguk and for me tteokguk was luxury because the rice cake for tteokguk is different texture from Japanese mochi and mochi I could eat anytime but tteokguk was special I only ate like once or a few times in a year so I felt that was so precious so every time I was able to that was something special because only mom could make it and 
back then it wasn't like now where you can go to any convenience store and get Korean food or you know there are lots of Korean food restaurants back then we were able to get Korean barbecue somewhere or go to Korean community and go to Korean market and get Korean ingredients so that was really special and on birthday we ate Korean style seaweed soup and as Japanese grilled red snapper and Western style uh, birthday cake so it was really multicultural but I thought that was normal and on the New Year's Day uh, we bow to parents you know we sit very formally and bow to parents we talk about New Year listen to my mom and dad talking about you know, what they want to do for New Year things like that and I thought everything was normal but as I started going to school and going to friends house I realized not everyone has kimchi in their refrigerator and not everyone celebrate New Year like we do or birthday or they don't eat bibimbap so that's the first time I kind of realized oh okay I knew my mom and dad a different thing I, I heard or I asked you know, um, and I knew that they are Korean but that's when I realized like wow our culture is different I think the very first intercultural training I received is from my dad I think he was talking about what's the difference between Korean culture and Japanese culture and he told me okay so if your neighbor is cooking and they don't have some ingredients and they come to you and hey can I borrow this ingredient and you give it to them in Japan you're supposed to reciprocate and give give it back uh, the same amount as soon as possible to be polite but in Korea if you do that people think oh you're acting like stranger or you don't know me you know we're close you don't have to do that and that was the very first time my parents taught me objectively about the difference so now I remember that was the first time I went okay so that's the difference and then I grew up and I became a, a middle school student and I was a really weird child so I was really happy that I'm different from everyone so I was always telling everyone that I'm Korean my mom is Korean my dad half Korean I'm mixed which is very rare because usually because of the discrimination uh, people usually want to hide their Korean heritage and but I was always doing that in elementary school and middle school and one day I remember it was we were outside and we were watching soccer uh, players playing it was after school and we were little middle school girls and like we were looking looking at these soccer players you know boys who were a little bit older than us like we were cheering like oh look and one girl who was my close friend came to me and hey Tomomi I want to tell you something and I said yeah go ahead what is it and she said I'm Korean too but don't tell anyone and I was surprised because her name was totally Japanese and it is a fact that a lot of Koreans in Japan they don't get Japanese citizenship because they don't have Japanese uh, heritage you know no matter how many generation you are or no matter if you were born in Japan if your one parent is not Japanese you don't get citizenship you know unlike US she was born and raised all her life in Hiroshima she only spoke um, Japanese and she had this tsume it means like uh, the name that you use unofficially in your on your passport you have Korean name but when you go to school or when you go to work you use this Japanese name so I only knew that her Japanese name so I was surprised and then I thought oh thank you for telling me but I was so surprised so I went back to my mom at home and said you know what my friend such and such told me that she's Korean and I wonder why she doesn't tell everybody else and my mom, who has Korean passport, told me, Hey, Tomomi, your 
Japanese. Your citizenship is Japanese. So when you get married or when you get a job, it doesn't affect you much. But if you have Korean passport, Korean citizenship, it will affect you a lot. So her experience could be different from yours. That's why maybe she doesn't want to tell her identity. And that was when I realized, oh, okay, so different situation gives different identity to people. That's something I realized during middle school. And another identity moment that I had was uh, when I went to US to get my bachelor's degree. Um, I went to San Diego, so there were a big Korean community, you know, Korean Americans, and also you know Korean immigrants. And I liked karaoke, so uh, I used to go to Korean karaoke place all the time. And they're really good. They can tell who's Korean, and who's Japanese by looking at their face. And when they when they see Japanese people coming, they say hello, how many? And when they see Korean person, they say "Osanseyo, miopuniseyo." And so when I went there. They said, "Ososeyo, miopuniseyo." So I said, "Oh, uh, I look Korean because my parents are Korean, but I don't speak Korean. I I have Japanese citizenship." And the owner, who was Korean immigrant, told me, "Oh, you have Korean blood, and you don't speak Korean. Shame on you." And this could be kind of humiliating, or negative comment to some people but for me it was like aha moment I thought oh yeah that's right I have Korean heritage and Korean is my heritage language so maybe I should start learning it so I started learning on my own for two years while I was in the States and I was lucky that I had a lot of Korean friends so I practiced and I liked karaoke so I practiced by singing karaoke and I enjoyed it. That was when I encountered this book uh, called Zainichi Kankoku Chosenjin which is uh, Koreans in Japan uh, by Professor and in that book, uh, the part that gave me aha moment was, I think it was an introduction or really beginning of the book, but it was written that um, a lot of times, Koreans or Japanese, or we tend to think that when you say somebody is Korean, somebody is Japanese, then we think they have Korean nationality, Korean language, and Korean cultural heritage. Like same for Japanese, yeah. if they have, they have Japanese name, citizenship and they speak Japanese language and they have Korean cultural heritage but this combination can be totally different someone can have Korean citizenship but doesn't speak any Korean language and no cultural heritage something something like a person who was born in Japan and raised you know and away from Korean culture then they might not speak language and they don't know Korean language uh, and you can speak Korean language but maybe you don't have uh, this Korean citizenship or Korean cultural background or you have Korea, Korean cultural background but you might not have the citizenship or language so there are so many different combinations and that, that time I feel like wow that's interesting and what is me and so I don't have citizenship and I don't have the language as first language but I grew up in Korean culture and it's perfectly okay to not have these three all together. You can just have one, you can have two, but that's okay. So since then, I decided to say, okay, uh, are you Korean or are you Japanese? I just tried to describe it. I have Japanese citizenship and now, thanks to this uh, owner at the karaoke place, I speak Korean fluently and I even do business and coaching and training in Korean and I say but it's not my first language it's my heritage language and I have partially Korean culture uh, in my childhood I grew up so that liberated me I mean I was never negative about my identity but that kind of helped me organize my thoughts or oh okay so you can be you know it's complicated it's not just one thing but 
world. You can be just yourself. So then, after I got my bachelor's degree from US, I went to Korea to test my language after learning two years on my own. I went to Yonsei University's uh, language institute, studied for six months, and then I continued learning on my own. Then I got married to my husband, who is Korean, and we spent uh, 12 years married together plus year and a half of dating time and still we are contacting each other because we're raising a child together and I went back and forth between US, Japan, Korea and since six years ago I've been living here so who is Tomomi? Is she Japanese? Is she Korean? It takes a whole lot to explain who I am and yeah just by looking at my name you cannot really know that and that is an iceberg that we usually talk about as intercultural trainer you know you see the tip of the iceberg that's above the water that's something that you can see you can see my name Tomomi Kumai but at the bottom there is things that you cannot see so by looking at my name you cannot see my personal history or my culture heritage and another concept we usually talk about the layer of culture as onion so yeah Tomomi Kumai the very outside the name looks very Japanese but if you peel each layer then you will see different layer as a Japanese person or as a Korean person or as a person who got a BA and MA from American University so my life itself is intercultural training I guess and so that's why I am very happy to be doing intercultural training to people and also this is not about only intercultural but I think it's about life um, I offer workshop about resiliency or adversity to advocacy but whatever you think is weakness or people usually want to hide or people usually judge you can be actually your strength so yeah Japanese person talking about Korean business Korean culture then I could feel like yeah maybe I'm not enough to do that but I can leverage it yes so I can look at Korean culture from Japanese perspective American perspective and Korean perspective and that's why I welcome a lot of people's different opinions to look at one culture so I enjoy my work and I'm really thankful and I'm really thankful for this person's comment so because I came up with this YouTube video so today's question for everyone is what is the part that you feel people judge you so you don't want to hide but it could be your strengths just like my identity so I'm looking forward to hearing from you please leave a comment or send me a message or emails thank you so much see you next time